What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Lockdown being locked down again. I can't go out and record videos. I was meant to have a video out last weekend and I just wasn't happy with it with some footage from last year. So, decided to do something I haven't done yet. Uh, and I'm going to do a couple of these now because I've missed out on a couple of bikes I've done. And the first one is the Ducati Hypermotard 796 long-term review video because I had this bike for almost two years, I think, and never did a review on it. So, what a fantastic bike this was. I took it around Europe. I had probably the most miles done on this bike out of all the bikes I've ever owned so far. Um, and I loved it, you know, all the way back from the review video here to... Um, all the way in Monaco and Germany and stuff, uh, it, it just never let me down and it was such a fantastic bike. We're going to talk all about the, the different specs of the bike, different features, the, the service intervals, build quality, everything. Okay, we're going to go into real depth. In the background is just some footage that I recorded. Um, some will tie up in the video and I can add it in to like, you know, little 0 to 60s or the top speed of it. Well, Top speed, I might save for another video, so you'll have to stay tuned for that one. So, let's just get into the specs and start talking about the bike. So, power is 81 horsepower uh, from the 803cc V-twin or L-twin motor. The height, um, obviously this is an important one for me being so small. It's actually classed as a medium seat height, so it's 825mm, 82.5cm 80, uh, or 32.5 inches. Um, but... It's more the fact of how wide the seat is. Because it's so wide, you straddle your legs more. So I was proper on tippy toes on this bike. But a massive benefit to that is the dry weight of it is only 160 kilograms. 167, sorry, kilograms. Um, so it's such an easy bike to, to, to have on one foot. Suspension's not fantastic on this bike. Or oh, that's what I found was probably one of the most downfalls of the bike. So the front suspension was non-adjustable. Uh, and you could adjust the preload and the, the rebound on the back. The rear suspension wasn't too bad, to be honest. It was more the front suspension I found was quite soft. Um, a bit more too soft than I would have liked. I would have liked a bit firmer. Brakes. The brakes, uh, the, the Brembo radial brakes on this is fantastic. You, you, I don't think you'd ever complain about, about the front brakes or the, even the rear brake really. Both, probably the best brakes I've ever had on a bike uh, was this bike. And, 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 you know, I used to say in my older videos that I didn't have much experience. You know, I've ridden, what, 30 bikes in my whole lifetime. Now working at a motorcycle dealership, I ride millions, not millions, but I've ridden loads of bikes now. And I can get a feel of uh, good and bad <laughs> very much straight away. Um, another key benefit of this bike, which I really like, some people don't like, I really like, is the engine braking. The engine braking is so strong. Uh, as long as you're, you're rev matching as you downshift, God, it is fantastic and I love it. Something I love that's, that's something about I love about V twins is that the, the, the engine braking is fantastic. Service interval. So this is, this is going to be quite a big one. Um, people think it's a bit Ducati is going to be expensive because one of the main rivals for this bike, surprisingly, is an MT07, which you know, very cheap and service interval is pretty good. They're not too bad on this, so it has been actually extended to seven thousand five hundred miles for every service interval. Uh, it works out about two hundred quid. Uh, annually um, which isn't bad at all really not that bad at all it's when you get to the valve clearances that's when it starts to get expensive when I got luckily I didn't have to do my valves my, my valves I didn't have to do my valves because it was already done by the dealership when I bought it but I did get it credit up and it if I got it done at Riders of Bristol which is the catty dealership would have cost me about 800 quid so it can be quite expensive comfort as I said comfort seat fantastic if you get one of these recommend it 100 percent you can find a comfort seat get it, it i mean i went I, we did a 24 hour day never had a problem it's fantastic um but just in general super comfy seat um riding position fantastic pegs aren't too high too low it just seems pretty much spot on um upright riding position wide handlebars seriously this bike is 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 more than comfy uh, I don't think you'll ever uh, complain about the comfort of this one. One thing you might complain about though is the wind resistance. Uh, as you can see on the bike, there's no windscreen. Uh, you can get aftermarket ones. There is kind of the shape of it, you know, kind of diverts it a little bit. And you'll see in the clips, I've been on the Autobahn 
Uh, I've done plenty of mile, mile uh, <laughs> I've plen done plenty of miles on the motorway. Um, big open roads where you can feel the wind. The lot. I've done it all, and I, 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 I never really had a problem. <laughs> Myself. Reliability, probably one of the big ones. People think Ducati, not reliable. Not anymore, seriously. I mean that, they're not that bad. Hypermotors seem to get a lot of stick. Snowcat used to have one, uh, Canadian motor vlogger, uh, and he had nothing but bad. He had one of the new ones. Trust me, if you go on the reviews on this, they're all pretty good. Um, the only, the whole time I had it, I had one incident where I thought it was a faulty thing. Really wasn't bad. Uh, it was actually on the, on the, um, Europe trip, the, the bike decided not to have a speedo anymore. Turns out, I think it was Germany or Czech Republic were absolutely we got covered in dust, um, and the speedo sensor just got covered in dust and wasn't picking up. The I think it's got a magnet on the front. I think that's what the the one on this one, um, and just wasn't picking that up. As soon as it got clean, done job. Worked absolutely fine. So, I mean, reliability wise, that's nothing. You know, absolutely nothing compared to. My Duke 125 where the alternating stator blew up, which, you know, they all happen, uh, seem to happen on. And I had this actually on my A2 license. Uh, right at the end of my A2 license, is this, I had this bike, and a lot of people ask me, can you get this on an A2 license? Now, technically yes and technically no. Um, a lot of people say, uh, because of the power to weight ratio, you can't have it. In my opinion, just fucking buy it. If you're on A2 and you're thinking, oh, um, I'm in an urine. Just get it. Seriously, just get it and restrict it. You can buy restricted kits for it, restrict it. Don't think you're going to have a problem with it. I was able to insure it, everything else, never had a problem. So just just get one. If you think about getting one on the A2, get one. Doesn't matter. I haven't restricted mine. Never did. Not going to lie to you. Um, and, you know, I would obviously recommend doing restricting it. Um, but when you de-restrict it, it's got absolutely a load of torque to be able to overtake pretty much everything. Um... It's almost got that perfect on the road power, and I'll explain that a little bit more in the uh, later on. And now the price of one of these. You're probably thinking Ducati, expensive. Yeah? Uh, the market MT07, you can pick them up for four grand. You can pick a Hypermotard up now for about four and a half to five and a half. So it is more expensive than the, uh, the, the MT07. But when we go to a, you know, every, We'll go on to the comparison between M27 and the Hypermotor in a second. Um, but there's not a massive difference in it, in the price, really. 500 quid, you're paying more for the name and slightly more power. That's pretty much it. But I sold mine for 4.5 uh, with 20,000 miles on it. And you can pick an M207 with 20,000 miles on it for about the same anyway. So, you know, it, the, it's, it's not a massive difference in price. Parts, this wear might differ a little bit. Parts are super easy to get for this. Uh, I bought a load of carbon fibre for mine. Um, as I said, eBay levers, stuff like that. Super easy to get, but because it's a Ducati, they are more expensive. Simple as that. They just are. Parts for this are going to be more expensive. Popularity. Now, this is something that I like um, when I go buy a bike. I don't want them to be millions out there. The reason I bought my R3 instead of an M207, because M207s are just ridiculously pop and everyone's got one. But that just goes to show they are great bikes, and I've finally ridden one now, and I absolutely loved it. Personally, would I pick an M207 over the Hyper Motard? No, I would have had the Hyper Motard. But I absolutely love M207s. They're amazing. If you haven't watched my Instagram stuff, go follow me on Instagram. You'll see all the bikes I get to ride while I'm at work and things, and you know, we have some great fun over there. So go over there, follow my Instagram. Uh, I think we're almost... We're heading over to 4,000 uh, 4, followers. It's mad. So go follow me over there, and I'll probably follow you back anyway. Um... The looks of things, you know, bikes, bikes for me, definitely, I, I, I need a bike that looks amazing, looks lush, uh, because if you haven't, if you, if you buy a bike, and you're walking away from it, and you don't look back, you've bought the wrong bike, simple as that, alright, if you're looking back at it, and you're like, god, that's a gorgeous bike, uh, or you get, you know, other people looking at it, that's even a better thing, when I was over in Italy, and I park over, and everyone's staring at this thing, you know, you're like, god damn, that's sexy, it's like buying a Ferrari, it's amazing, um, so the looks of this bike, it's just, it's an absolutely stunningly gorgeous machine and everything is about it, it's wonderful, I loved it. Um, 
mods per gallon. Um, it's not bad, but it's not great either. Um, 50 miles per gallon, it's not bad. Um, tank range of about 168, I think it was, uh, that I was getting on the Europe trip, so it's not bad at all. Um, it's, it's such an easy bike to ride with the hydraulic clutch and everything else. Um, as I said, if you want to know the top speed of this bike, you'll have to watch the next video. And if you're not subscribed, you best be subscribed so you see when exactly when it comes out. Because I think the top speed of this bike would surprise you. It definitely surprised me. It's a lot more than I think most specs uh, state. Obviously, the speedo is not calibrated and everything else, but I think you'd be surprised. So, you can buy the 796 and the 1100. The 1100, uh, the 796 is 12 kilograms lighter than the 1100 and 20 millimeters lower, which is why I bought it. Um, also, if you go onto A2 website, I'm pretty sure you can have 1100 on an A2 license. Correct me if I'm wrong, but because of the power of the weight, I think you can get one. 90% sure on that one, but I think it can come into it. Um, but the reason I bought it was because it was 20 millimeters or two centimeters lower, um, which made a big difference to me. I did sit on 1100 and it did feel a lot taller. The the 796 is actually a lot easier to ride. The 1100, the 1100 has so much torque. I think it's oh, I think it's over 100 newton meters of torque, and you come around a corner and it's got that so much torque. Either the rear wheel wants to spin, uh, you know, the, suspe the suspension shifts, and the front wheel just wants to be up in the air all the time. The the 796 is so much more planted. You you can come around the corner, put that power on it sooner. It's so much smoother, and it's just a nicer exit. So it just makes, even well, in town as well, because it's, I haven't got the dry clutch, um, like the 1100 does, it's a wet clutch, um, everything just seems nicer to use and nicer to, uh, to manage, really. Um, however, the 1100 does have adjustable suspension, so and more power and more torque, so yeah, it's a personal preference, do you want to just be nuts out there or do you want something you can appreciate riding a bit more? The M07. Probably the biggest the, the biggest target on this. Um, yeah, it's cheaper, but it's it's cheaper to buy and it's also cheaper insurance as well, which is another thing. Insurance is on the hypermotard. You're getting up there. It's probably one of the most expensive bikes I've insured, and I've insured a thousand CC sports bikes and stuff, so it's up there. Um, but they do have less power and less torque, so not massively. So the MT07 has 75 horsepower and 68 newton meters of torque. The Hive Meritard, 81 horsepower, 75 newton meters of torque. The wet weight was 179 kilograms to 182 kilograms with ABS. The Hyper Meritard, the dry weight was 167, so they're going to be about the same anyway. So there's not much in it. So at the end of the day, personal preference comes down to which one do you like better? Which one looks better? Which one sounds better to you? I think the M207 sounds better. It's that, that Parallel Twin sounds amazing. But... For me, it was all about the looks, and the the hype motard just did it for me personally, and that was it. I absolutely loved it. It's probably one of the best bikes I've ever owned. The only reason I sold it was to experience more bikes and go into thousand cc sports bikes and things. Um, I say this probably about all my bikes. If I had the money, I would keep it. This was definitely one of them. This is at the top of the list. It's one of the bikes I can look back at, and I wish I'd never sold. Um, it was such a a gorgeous bike that that 100 horsepower mark on the road i think is 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 everything i think that's everything you need to have fun where it's not uncontrollable power around the corners but it has just everything in there which ties into my new bike as i said i want a, a middleweight naked with about 100 horsepower it's in that mark and i think it's probably going to be the best bike i've ever owned so if you're not subscribed guys you have to be subscribed that cut that i have that bike now i'm just waiting for lockdown so i can do the real video that's it. That's literally it. I have so many parts in my garage now, piling up, ready to you know start chucking on there, doing a build series. But I can't put them on there because I'm waiting to do the reveal video. So I hope you can appreciate that, guys. And I'm sorry, but I hope you're all staying safe. If you missed the hyper motard as much as I do, make sure you hit the like button. Comment down what you would choose: the M207 or the hyper motard, or the 796 or the 1100. And let me know. If this video has helped you buy one. Shoot me a message on Instagram, send me some pictures of the ones you buy, because um, I absolutely love to see them. Uh, and if you end up with my one, uh, I'm pretty sure the plate's still on there that says Mighty Midget on there. So if, if you manage to find it, that would be mint. Um, 
But other than that, thank you for watching all the way to the end as well. I really do appreciate that. As we said, we're chasing other other YouTubers to try and beat them to 10,000 subscribers. If we can do it, it'd be, <laughs> you know, it'd be a dream come true. So I really appreciate you guys watching. I'm sorry it's not the most exciting video, um, but as soon as this lockdown's over, we can get back out there and we can enjoy hopefully a gorgeous summer. So thank you again. I love you and I'll leave you. Peace.